October greetings to one and all. Welcome to another edition of the Dazzle at Bowers newsletter, and I guess we could say in video clips as well. I'm Arturo Gomez of Kubo Jazz, and we are in the Kubo's home, the Buell Media Center, in the Masterpiece Studio for our first chapter uh, recorded here. And I am very happy to have this afternoon Greg Gisbert, who is part of an amazing set of music coming up at Dazzle beginning on October 21st, 20th, uh, 20th so. excuse me, <laughs> which is Wednesday. There will be three nights and five shows dedicated to the amazing Dizzy Gillespie. As you can see on the cover of the 50th anniversary of the Jazz Audia Festival that takes place every year in San Sebastian of the Basque Country in Spain, he was very popular there and played many times. And his birthday, Dizzy's birthday that is, is October 21st. So in conjunction with his birthday, as a tribute, Greg Gisbert, along with uh, John Lee and Tommy Campbell, have organized a series of tributes to Dizzy Gillespie. It starts on Wednesday, October 20th, with the composition tribute to Dizzy Gillespie. It continues on Thursday, two shows, of Dizzy's Afro-Latin experience, such an important part of jazz history. And uh, Dizzy was right there at the beginning of uh, bringing Latin jazz to many ears for the very first time. And then on the concluding day, which is Friday, there will be a big band tribute to Dizzy Gillespie, followed by a magnificent jam session to tell us more about these events, Greg Gisbert, who is a, a trumpet player who has been influenced, like so many others, by Dizzy Gillespie. Thank you, Arturo. It's a pleasure to be here, and thank you to everybody at Dazzle. Thank you to Donald, and thank you to Kelly for being here for helping us put this together. It's an exciting event, three-day event, uh, featuring three totally different themes. The first night, Wednesday night, October 20th is a fantastic through the decades show of Dizzy's most popular hits as a composer and innovator as an arranger as well and that night will be featuring Eric Gunnison on piano, Anisha Rush on alto saxophone and John Gunther on tenor saxophone and flute with our very special guest John Lee on the bass and Tommy Campbell on the drums. The Thursday night is two shows of the many decades of Dizzy's Afro-Cuban and Latin music side, as Arturo mentioned, and I also consider Dizzy Gillespie to be the creator of world music from that event, because every place Dizzy would go, he would incorporate some kind of rhythm or harmony from the region. He, he had never heard the music before. He was such a great student of the music that he shared that with all his band members that he hired. He was a mentor, but he was also a student. So to that end, we have the Thursday night uh, being the Latin night with all kinds of great players that's gonna be kind of a different band. We'll have Victor Mestas on piano, Serafin Sanchez on any woodwind of his choice or multiple woodwinds, Anisha Rush and myself, and Leo Corona on percussion. And that's gonna be a fantastic night. And the big band uh, show on Friday the 22nd, the early show is going to be music from the Dizzy Gillespie Big Band Library, from the original library, and in addition, some uh, music that had been written for the Dizzy Gillespie All-Star Big Band, which I've been a member of since 1999 or 2000. Uh, in the Big Band, there are gonna be six people that have played with Dizzy, or, and or the uh, Dizzy Gillespie All-Star Band, and those are those folks are uh, Eric Gunnis, or uh, excuse me, that's gonna be Paul, Paul Romain said he might be coming by for that, but Brad Good and John Gunther have both played on the band. We have some Denver people that played the big band many times, Eric Gunnison and uh, Paul Romain. Uh, for the big band night on Friday, it's going to be John Lee on bass and 
So I became on drums as well as CCJA faculty and alumni, and we're going to work in some current students to play a few tunes each. So we want our families to come out. Uh, it's in, like I said, it's in association with CCJA. So it's going to be an exciting night and the jam session to follow. Where we really want to invite players that that are dedicated to play and want to come hang out and check us, check out the jam session and listen. But also, I'll be running the jam session and. If you can play and you love Dizzy Gillespie and you know some Dizzy Gillespie material, please come by. And Greg, if I'm not mistaken, in addition to buying tickets for the individual shows, a patron might consider buying a pass to all three nights and all five shows. That's true. I, I, they have, an, they have a, a five show pass, I believe it's for $80. And in addition with being able to attend all five shows after the first night, I think we'll be having a dinner with the folks that buy the five day pass and uh, with all the, some of the band members, at least definitely myself and John Lee and Tommy Campbell. And they have so much history to share with people and they're both great educators, great people, great artists, great musicians. And it's a dream for me because I've been trying to get them out here for about 20 years. <laughs> so. It's good Here to we see. Go. You got to be careful what you wish for because eventually it will come true. Well, <laughs> I tell you what, I played on so many big bands, and they say there's karma. I, I first couple of years I complained a lot, but then I grew up and realized I need to like just keep quiet, keep it to myself. But I was always at times prone to being like, they should do it this way. This is so silly. And then now that I've put together a big band, they call it karma. <laughs> now you know. Now I know. Now you're on the other side. Now I'm of the on fence. the other side. So, but grateful for a new experience. Hey, hey Greg, I, I'm I'm happy you brought out that fact that Dizzy was, if not the sole creator, he was definitely a pioneer in establishing what we call nowadays world music. Because besides the Cuban and the other Latin Caribbean uh, influences he brought to the band. He also naturally played a lot of Brazilian music and other world uh, rhythms that he would incorporate into his music. As you mentioned, wherever he would go, he'd pick up something uh, from the indigenous culture there and incorporate it into jazz, which is why I like to say that jazz is the world's greatest art form because no matter what ingredient you throw into the jazz pot, it remains jazz, and huh. that's the beauty of it. And, and great, wow, for so instance, honest. another thing about Dizzy that is unheralded is that he took many a tour sponsored by the State Department, and wherever he would go, if he saw talent that was above the average and worthy of going to New York and the United States, he would make arrangements to have that artist brought to the United States. He did that with the great Argentinian pianist, Lalo Schifrin. He did it with another pianist from Panama, Danilo Perez, and he helped conspire, which is the real true word, to bring Arturo Sandoval, the fantastic trumpet player, to the United States uh, from Europe. So Dizzy was always looking out for new talent and to nurture them and to give them the room for growth that they deserve. And, and Greg, uh, did you ever get, as a young man, get to meet uh, Dizzy as you were coming up? I did. I, I, have, I had five experiences with Dizzy Gillespie, two of which were in downtown Denver, two nights in a row. I went to go here Dizzy at the top of the, at the time it was called Top of the Holiday Inn, now it's the Sheraton. But uh, that was 1982 or 83. I got to hear him and, and I was just so star, starstruck and I was blown away just to like actually be in the presence of Dizzy. And, but I also, those are the first type two times that I heard him. I heard him many, many times on tour throughout the years and would go hear him at different clubs. But that was the most impactful one because I remember sitting right up front being very close to Dizzy. There was a time on the SS Norway Jazz Cruise uh, in 1986 where uh, Dizzy Gillespie was on the cruise and 
Buddy Rich's band was on the cruise. I was playing with Buddy, and we were playing our, our set, and Diz, uh, Buddy was in a particularly foul mood, and Diz, <laughs> Dizzy was in the audience, That's and funny. Dizzy came up and roasted Buddy Rich. Oh my. To the point where Buddy was laughing and he was happy, and then he sat in with us, and then another time, uh, I'll, maybe I'll, save, I'll definitely save that story for the dinner, uh, for, for some grown-ups. But, uh, <laughs> but we had I got to hang out all day with him when Dizzy played the grand reopening of Littleton Town Hall. Oh my! In 1986, and uh, I spent the entire day with him, and it was just a thrill. And then uh, saw him at Madrid Airport one time, hanging out with Lou Soloff, and, and Dizzy was he had his uh, suitcase open, he was looking for his Balboa, and he's like, well, "We see it." We said, "Dizzy, what are you looking for?" Balboil. <laughs> so we're able to give him a bottle of Balboil. He was such a generous soul, and and uh, wow, I, I'm so excited to get the chance to play this music and to have our friends come out. And for students that that are really dedicated to play, this is a great opportunity because we learn a lot of stuff in jazz schools about chords and scales, and we have our mentors and our heroes, and a lot of whom have passed. Well, we have we have in our midst those three days, bassist and drummer who have played with literally everybody. I would say everybody would, perhaps they, they didn't get a chance to play with Louis Armstrong or Duke Ellington, but I guarantee you they heard them. And, they, and I guarantee you that they have those lessons. So I'm really encouraging uh, students and families that have kids that are dedicated to playing and all you, our friends at CCJA and other organizations, you can get this information from the source by asking musical questions to people who were there. So I can't think of a better reason to come. And again, it begins on Wednesday, October 20th, continues on Thursday, the 21st, concluding on Friday, the 22nd, with not only the big band playing, but then a amazing to be a jam session to follow. And this is all in conjunction with the forthcoming 25th anniversary of Dazzle in January of next year, 2022, the 8th and 9th to be exact, it will be the 25th anniversary of Dazzle when a group of jazz lovers decided to bring to Denver a little jazz club at its former location, 930 Lincoln Avenue, and then moving about four or five years ago to its present location in the historic Bowers Building, one of the oldest buildings in Denver. It's even got a historic landmark plaque on the wall outside. So Dazzle at Bowers is the place to be in conjunction with their 25th anniversary kickoff and Dizzy Gillespie's birthday. And Greg, in addition that you got to meet and, and hang out a bit with Diz in your youth years. Uh, you also have been playing for many years as part of the Dizzy Gillespie Alumni Big Band. You have another special connection to Diz is that you have one of his uh, former bent bell trumpets in your home. I just shared that with Arturo before before we started talking and uh, I, too many circumstances and events to like tell you how it got there but I have one of the three trumpets built by the Martin Company where they actually bent the bell. They had three experimental angles and they sent those three horns out with Dizzy on the road. Six weeks later, when they came back from Chicago, he said, make the angle off of this horn and gave that back to the company. And I have it and it, it does need some work. If any great horn repair people are checking this out, hit, hit. But, well, I remember but, uh, when you played point. it one time at the at the reopening, as we called it, the reawakening of the Rossonian yes. for cakes and jazz. Yes. And you were part <laughs> of the CCJA ensemble, and you brought out your bent bell trumpet, and it just blew everybody away. And I have a few photos of that afternoon where you played it. And it's such a treasure to see that former uh, Dizzy Gillespie trumpet in the hands of, Dizzy, of Greg Gisbert. <laughs> well, I look forward to passing that horn on to, to uh, that's sort of like the, this, the legacy of that trumpet. It's been through uh, Reynolds Schilke had it first, then Dizzy Gillespie, then Reynolds Schilke again, and then uh, Roger Ingram, then my dear friend Billy Spencer. And uh, he left it in his will that, that the horn should go to me, and which was, 
so touching. And uh, happened to be in Charlotte, where, oh where the heart was of his family, and where he lived his final years. And uh, in Charlotte, with a night off, got in an Uber, had Dizzy's horn, went back to the hotel. It was very surreal. I was like, is this really happening? But it really <laughs> did happen. It did. So I'll be playing that a little bit. Oh, my. Well, there you have it. I hope that you and your friends and your families will all participate, if not in all of the shows in honor of Dizzy Gillespie, but pick one out that best suits your schedule of what you may be doing, and you won't be disappointed with whatever show you choose. Again, that's Wednesday, the 20th of October. It's the tribute to the compositional side of Dizzy Gillespie playing the music that he composed. On uh, Thursday the 21st is the Afro-Latin experience, two shows early and late, and it's playing the music associated with the Dizzy Gillespie uh, big band that included the legendary Cuban conguero uh, Chano Pozo, and then followed by other great congueros after he was assassinated. And then on Friday, it all gets topped off with the big band tribute to Dizzy, followed by an amazing jam session that our guest, Greg Gisbert, is organizing. So please make sure you visit DazzleDenver.com and get your tickets now. And please consider being one of those to get the pass for all five shows on those three nights and enjoy a dinner with Greg and former Dizzy band members uh, John Lee and Tommy Campbell.